Thank you for joining us. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Hemke. You're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. We're joined today by... Nick Prignitz. Nick. Boss Dog. How the hell are you? Glad to be back. It's been a little while. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was in... We just got in here while you were getting ready outside, and he's like, man, he's looking around. He's like, it's been a while since I've been here. What have you guys been doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be honest. When you have so much fun, every day is a blur. Yeah. 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 Actually, one of our listeners hit me up uh, on Facebook, Caden Hess, somebody yeah. you and I both yeah. know, uh, was like, hey, are you guys coming out with any new episodes? Yeah. Uh, so I just thought we'd address that real fast. We we had the L5P kind of explode onto the Duramax scene mm-hmm. and L5P tuning. It was all the hype on earth. Uh, so we went back and we rehashed a, a bunch of our yep. old L5P episodes. We even threw in the 2.8 liter with Nicola Menarini. You joined us for that one. That was good. And all of the Gail Banks ones. Yeah. So you were there for all of those as well. Uh, so listeners are pretty used to hearing our three voices right now because we did like six episodes in six days. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Humvee Ride Along just went up live. I know it's a little bit outside of our usual published schedule. We usually get go, go live on Fridays. We kicked that one out on Monday. So if you missed it um it's fucking loud man <laughs> dude it's like seriously he was giving me crap because i didn't want to go for a drive when we were in the you know driving it and filming yeah. i had a headache like i had a headache like, let's just get out we could talk about it in the studio i've been driving the humvee to and from work uh, just, <laughs> just because i think it's hilarious and uh, i've been wearing earplugs <laughs> yeah <laughs> i could see that totally being worth it the way people stare at you because the night before me and paul had it out me and one of the guys from work, we went to ice cream and, and took it out. Yeah. People like literally like they don't know what to think. No. They don't all. know if you're gonna get out and shoot it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't yeah, you said it not me, but exactly. We were we were going out to film off road and I was telling Nick, we me and the other guy in media, we had the windows up in my car yeah. and we're I don't know. He's not riding my ass at all. Uh, and all of a sudden, I hear the turbo scream. Yeah. And I'm like looking up in my mirror and like look down my radios on. All my windows yes. are up. The AC is going. I'm like, I can still hear that yeah. turbo. People don't realize like when you're in the when you're inside, it, it's very, very loud. Like like I said, where that like dog boxes or whatever you call it, like yeah. the turbocharger is literally at your knees. And all of this we actually just said so we could say we're really sorry for the audio quality on that episode. Yeah, that's uh, all. We did have to scream over an engine that was four inches away from our face. Yeah. So <laughs> running twenty two hundred <laughs> RPM pretty much at all times. Yeah, so. yeah. At idle, right? <laughs> at idle. Yeah. Uh quick shout out to some of our sponsors here, WC Fab. Uh, they've made some big strides on the L5P stuff here recently. I know they got some some parts that they're yeah. uh, pushing through the pipeline there. Seeing a lot of posts. Anybody see Jason Worley's regular cab up for sale? Dude, I'm trying to give Nick back the Cummins so, so I can grab that unit. So Christmas is coming, guys. I don't know if you know anything about me. Um, <laughs> if you don't, that would be a great gift. That's your truck. Yeah. Like, you've been that's, talking about that. That's your truck. That's a really nice truck. It's yeah. fun to drive, too. It drives really yeah. well. He's, he's got a great price on it. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. So WC Fab, all of your fab parts, twin turbo kits, S300, S400 installs, intakes, and anything else that just really needs welding, right? I mean, okay. these guys at this point are, are pretty expansive on their line. Exergy Performance, we always want to give a shout out to Exergy. They take care of all of our fuel system needs uh, over here at Duramax Tuner and Calibrated Power. That's all we use in our trucks. That's all we use on our customer trucks. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason for that, guys. We've been doing this uh, quite a while. and Consistency. Consistency. <laughs> when you that's find something that works, word. right? Yeah. <laughs> Just, you can count on it every time. Yeah. And that, that's a big deal when we're talking about injectors. Uh, DuramaxTuner.com, of course. Uh, Nick is here with us to talk a little bit about Duramax Tuner and Calibrated Power. What is what's on the horizon, Nick? What's a little inside scoop for our listeners? Uh, we've been really doing a lot of uh, harvest, you know, a lot of tillage, combines, uh, heavy tillage. So your big 9410R, 9530, big deer stuff. Uh, of course, working on the L5P a lot. You're seeing a lot of updates on turbocharger, transmission, drivability, tuning. I mean, we're, we're investing a lot of time and energy and money in tuning the L5P. Um, and then, of course, we got the Mahindra Rocksor, which, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. which has been a really fun, uh, really fun uh, development project for us. Uh, doing some performance parts for that one, and just getting to race that thing around in the lot next door. <laughs> Literally. Well, since, you, <laughs> since you're going to roll a segue, I'll like that. I think I'll jump on it, uh, guys. Our special guest for today, presented by Calibrated Power, is going to be Carl Plattenberger of Mahindra Rocksor. Carl, how the hell are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, Carl, you are the chief engineer, powertrain, and performance systems over there at Mahindra, uh, Mahindra USA, correct? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Now, that 
that is a brand that maybe a lot of our listeners aren't yeah. familiar with, or maybe even the Rocks or um, maybe not, might not be familiar with. Can you give us just kind of a brief rundown of who Mahindra is? Yeah, Mahindra in India is the largest SUV supplier. Um, they've got some uh, claim to fame um, of, of selling more SUVs than uh, than any other uh, vehicle manufacturer uh, operating in, within India. Um, they're also the largest tractor supplier uh, by volume in the world. Um, they also play a part in a lot of other uh, spaces, uh, from aerospace to uh, to agricultural uh, environments. Um, Anand Mahindra, the chairman and uh, great grandson of, uh, of the founding father, is uh, um, he likes to think of Mahindra as a, uh, a federation of independent corporations, and so it do, they do everything from everyday consumer type products that people uh, touch uh, around the world to very high tech. Uh, uh, aerospace type technologies uh, used in defense, and um, they're uh, doing quite a bit to improve their uh, their global footprint and to uh, make an impact on on the communities that they operate in. And uh, we've been operating in North America uh, since about 2013. Okay. That. That includes so much more than what I expected. Yeah. As I'm looking yeah. around the room, and, and obviously Carl's on the phone with us, uh, I'm I'm looking at Chris and Nick, and I'm going, aerospace? I knew <laughs> about the tractor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Like, that's what Nick, Nick, Nick taught me that early on. But, oh, my God. Tractor motors. That's what I thought, too. I was like, they make tractor motors. Like, that's it. Wow, I had no idea. How long has Mahindra been around? Uh, since uh, since the forties, I mean, they they started out in uh, uh, doing you know industrial uh, uh, products and, and farm equipment. Um, you know, they they have a, a similar background and history as you know the, the uh, development in, in North America, uh, which happened you know another sixty years before that, I would say. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, now they're 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 really trying to to leapfrog out of a developing uh, type uh, economy into a developed economy. I mean, it's uh, representing one sixth of the world's population, one point two billion people, um, and uh, they want the same things that uh, everybody in America wants, and they want to get there uh, without having to to spend two hundred years doing it. Right. So they've made uh, significant investments in uh, e-machines and, and uh, e-motors. I think you may have seen uh, they've made some headlines in uh, Formula E racing, which is, uh, from what I understand, pretty spectacular uh, thing to see. It's, uh, it's a very quiet version of Formula Racing, but <laughs> also very exciting. That's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, a couple of us over here are, are kind of into electric motors now and again. Electric <laughs> enthusiasts, for sure. <laughs> love the Tesla. Love a quiet, fast car ride home after a day of dynoing diesel vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> you, awesome. You're not allowed to have that much fun as an adult. I've told you this, Nick. You don't, you don't get to dyno all day and drive a Tesla home. No more of that. You get to drive the Roxor home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've seen it. <laughs> So the, the, the rocks are, and I think this is for the people that maybe aren't like hardcore Jeep enthusiasts or maybe aren't hardcore off-road and side-by-side -side enthusiasts. Uh, Nick, you want to give us a little bit of a rundown? How would you describe the rocks are? I came into the rocks are on a Facebook ad, uh, saw it, and I was like, that Jeep looks really new and really <laughs> utilitarian. And then I just started started uh, investigating. And uh, I, from what I've read and from what I've experienced in the platform, it feels like a CJ2A with a couple of really well-placed modifications, uh, say for the five-speed transmission, and then, of course, the common rail 2.5-liter engine, uh, which is turbocharged, which is fits great in our wheelhouse. Um, it's just a really authentic, you know, visceral off-road experience. In the world of 200-horsepower side-by-sides, you have a 52 or 62-horsepower 52 to the tire that we yeah. measured 62 horsepower jeep that just kind of you know tromps tromp <laughs> along and yeah. it's fun to drive and it's you it, know it you goes. can't get a smile off your face when you're in the thing i honestly i have a problem calling it a side by side yeah, like it just it's, it's just <laughs> it is but it's like not um well carl you're you're our expert here on the phone can you maybe describe to our listeners like how do you guys really describe the rocks or to somebody who's never seen one well, you know, we've everybody's got their own description of it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my family has got some property uh, in the northern part of Michigan, and uh, we've got our, ourselves a, a, a small side by side, and we've got ourselves a, a, a tractor 
and I've always pictured this as fitting right in between those uh, those two products. Uh, in fact, you know, that was one of the in the early discussions that we had. You know, there's three guys in the garage in, in one of our facilities over here a couple of years ago, and we were talking about what what we would do and and, and where it would go, and we were. Uh, looking at at everything that Mahindra had in its portfolio, and and everybody kind of gravitated towards this, and and uh, from that point forward, we were like, well, is it sporty or is it utilitarian? You know, and uh, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, but it's <laughs> it's definitely got a leg up in a lot of areas. You know, the towing uh, capability of it far surpasses everything else in the in the side by side segment, and uh, that's been. A real attractive point for uh, for uh, a lot of people. So, yeah, no kidding. I mean, so it, it is basically a stripped down UTV Jeep. I, I think if I had to do like a, a one one minute elevator pitch on it, it would start with that sentence. Like it is <laughs> that that's what it looks like, right? To yeah. to the untrained eye, um, it's so cool though because you have all of these car features in it, yeah. right? So, so you are dealing with, with an actual five-speed transmission. You are dealing with, with like, actual seats, and, and it just it feels very much like you're in a Jeep, like you're going off-roading. Um, the, the horsepower limits maybe aren't, aren't my favorite thing on it right out the gate, but I, I see the UTV aspect of it. I see the towing aspect of it, right, like being on a ranch and actually using this. There's a fun part about having someone sitting next to you and getting to, you know, getting to drive an old Jeep. And, like, most old Jeeps are... I, Bucket of bolts is the first word that comes to my mind. Like, I don't want to be going 40 miles an hour off-road in an old Jeep. It just doesn't sound that fun to me. But when you're in this thing and everything's fresh and the bushings are fresh and the bearings are fresh and you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a pretty fun ride. I haven't uh, I haven't seen my wife smile this much at a toy that I brought home like, in a long time. Uh, she was gone, but we brought it over to the house. So... Uh, a couple guys at the shop, we went to this um, event, I guess you would say, for one of the local UTV power sports, power places, sports yeah. places. And I got to see everyone's reaction to seeing like six of these rock stores in a row. Like, yeah. And they thought, they're like, oh, these are redone Jeeps. No, they're not. You know, you go into all this. So after that, we had to drop it off at Nick's, and Nick's wife comes out. She was gone for about a half hour driving through their neighborhood. <laughs> she just left and didn't come back. It's like, she was pumped street on street legal. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's just a small neighborhood. She didn't get a lot of tickets this year. That's only a mover, bro. Don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so so that kind of brings me into like where does the rock store fit into the marketplace, right? Because it's it, it almost seems to me something to be more like guys with ranches or guys with property. Where where do you guys see it going? Uh, yeah, we we're not really sure. <laughs> it's been uh, you, you know it, it it was like uh, if you want. Uh, Three different opinions, put three different marketing guys in a room, <laughs> sort of sort of situation, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, it, it's been a challenge, and it's been a challenge, uh, kind of uh, convincing uh, people to, to get behind it early on. Um, now that it's out there, though, uh, you know, they're they're just overwhelmingly positive. You know, I want one of those. I use one of those. Uh, you know, I was looking at pictures. Uh, of how of how people are using it, and you know, you could make an ad out of that. You know, they're they're definitely going a lot to the hunting segment. The guy, uh, I saw two particular uh, snapshots. The one he had line, lined up uh, all of the the troops uh, uh, ducks, you know, on the on the hood of the vehicle, and in the front of the vehicle, and uh, another guy who had a, a boar about the size of uh, half the vehicle, you know, <laughs> laying in the front, and uh, and and so that, it's it's really kept it, it's caught on there. So. Somebody who wants to uh, to, to get out uh, somewhat in style and, and uh, reliably, and then still be able to haul what they you know if they're going to be you know a big game back or whatever. Uh, it, it, you know, it's it's proving to have that capability. Definitely, the ranchers. I, I want to say early on there was some some market tests, and and a guy hooked up a a, a, a hay wagon, you know, just loaded, you know, a barn full of hay, basically. And he pulled it, you know, out of sight and back again. And he said, "Yeah, I could use this, you know, all day. I could I definitely have, you know, spots on my my, my ranch for that." So, yeah. uh, a lot of municipalities have been uh, approaching us, um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, park rangers and things like that. Oh, so I can see that from like um, a DNR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the uh, some of the oil fields, the oil and gas industry, uh, those guys uh, definitely have a need for it as well. So it's been, uh, it, it seems to have been, you know, we're, we're, 
it, it's an odd uh, approach, uh, it being a, a diesel and it being a, uh, a manual transmission. Everybody thought that that was not going to see the light of day. Uh, we have people who don't drive manual transmissions, and because of the torqueiness in that, you know, it's, it's no no di- more difficult than driving uh, an automatic. You know, you, you drop the clutch in it, and you can just uh, putz along, and then you can upshift it at, at will. When I and, was, uh, it's, it's really forgiving. When I was talking to one of the regional reps uh, at the motorsports event that we were at, um, his name was Jeff. Um, Jeff was saying something that you guys have plans of coming out with an automatic version, and I kind of made that same comment of the the manual trans in the current Rocksor. You can't stall it out. Like I, I've tried, you can't. Like it's, it, it's really easy to drive. The clutch very, is really compliant. Yeah. Uh, the, the shift. I mean, the feel of the shifter yeah, is it's really very nice. nice. But you guys do have plans of an automatic. You know, we are trying to appeal to a large, uh, as large a market as we can, and there are certain markets that have uh, stated that uh, that's a requirement. So uh, we're definitely looking into that. Very cool. I guess I, I wanted to ask real quick about diesel because we don't see diesel in the side by side. I was surprised by that com- choice. I mean, community, I right? It, right. Same I here. I want to hear the backstory on we're, that. We're seeing more four cylinder, turbocharged, more power, faster, high RPM, high RPM type of vehicles coming out in this space. What made you guys gravitate towards the diesel? Uh, Mahindra is a diesel diesel DNA. It's really it's really the the, the bread and butter of the company. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, we struggle a little bit in, in talking about the, the North American market because we have talked about uh, you know V six applications and things like that, and uh, you know the the old stalwarts are like no. Not a, if it's not a tractor base, it's not uh, not going anywhere. Oh, really? <laughs> so okay. Not pursuing that. <laughs> okay. No, that's interesting. I, I mean, love that. It puts a good spot. Uh, no, it, <laughs> it, it, now, now that you know, there's there's market realities that are that are driving uh, certain uh, changes too. But as far as uh, as far as capital, I, one of the things that attracted me to the company um, and that I've enjoyed working with is they really try to eke out as much. Uh, you know, they, they take a frugal approach to everything. And, uh, you know, they, they look at all the advanced technology that people have thrown at things, and they're like, you know, how, how could we get the same results without having to, you know, to, to you know, uh, create a new rocket or create a new gizmo or, you know, yeah. integrate all yeah. that, that complexity. Well, you can see and that. so they really just, you know, dial back to the basics, and sometimes it's out of necessity. Um, because they like to they like to pay as they go and uh, not not uh, take on too much risk. Um, but other other parts of it is let's just see what we can eke out of what we got here and now. And uh, for this, you know, I know you're saying that not, it's not so thrilling with the 62 horsepower, but uh, you know, won two world wars too. You know, uh, 50 56 horsepower <laughs> is all the yeah, original. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's uh, it's if you open the hood on this thing and no. look in there, I mean, it's. It's the authenticity is there. Like yes. as a Jeep enthusiast, I could see, okay, I need a bag of par- I need a bag of tools about the size of my hand to fix anything on this. Thing. Right. You know what I mean? like, just, <laughs> well, as he's describing, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's a Jeep. No, you you just described every Jeep owner I've ever Without met. Saying Jeep. Like, Jeep. Right, right. <laughs> like yes, I can strip everything off of my yeah. truck. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can field yeah. clean my truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of being out in the field with these things, uh, I'd like to kind of get into the off road capability here. So I, I'm I'm really thinking about. When you guys were developing this, and obviously somebody like you, who's the chief engineer of the powertrain and performance systems, I'd imagine you you had some opinions on this about how beefy to make it, right? Like how much resistance can you put this thing under? Like you said, hey man, in, in one two world wars, like make me feel yeah, unpatriotic, really right? But, be, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you have to do to really feel like you were going to put your name behind it? Uh, well, for, for this, we, we really relied on the, the fact that uh, in in India, this has been bouncing along uh, on uh, millions of miles of, of non roads, basically, right? <laughs> uh, and and so it, it's uh, it, 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 and there was a lot of concern. Uh, you know, we said, yeah, we we think we want to bring this to North America. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, North America, that's going to be so much more stringent. They're going to expect so much. And we're like, yeah, but this is off road, and and everything you guys do on a daily basis is off road. Uh, so th- th- that that capability is 
it, is it, it's inherent, right? Um, uh, all, all of the, the original specs were intended to go uh, where the road ended, and uh, that's that's been maintained. We've not done any of the refinements uh, associated with uh, with trying to to make it, um, uh, you know. Uh, handle uh, asphalt corners at 60 miles an hour right <laughs> challenge accepted <So. laughs> drivers wanted yeah. so when you say off-road millions of off-road miles in india carl are, are you referring to like the thar or the the yeah. similar platform yeah. in india okay so just yeah. our yeah. listeners fo- following along right the mahindra thar yeah. uh, very similar i mean it's, it's almost a carbon copy of the Roxor. Um, I, I guess I don't know if the type. It has, I've only seen pictures. I don't know it has exactly. Added features, correct? I mean, uh, yeah. There's, uh, you know, it, it, to say, you know, to, to, to uh, I can tell you that that you you couldn't order that and and say, yeah, we're going to build just from from that set of parts. There's a there is uh, the, the engine it, itself um, is actually from a from a different product. Okay. Uh, it's not matched up with the with this uh, this configuration and in its exact specification. Um, I believe they did the same thing. You know, the the, wheel, the wheels and tires were were specific to, specifically tailored to North America. The axles have coming come in original, but you won't find that axle combination in that bar uh, okay. off road and um, transmission. Uh, Transmission uh, transmission is is available in a, in a slightly different variation. Mechanically, they're the same, but functionally, they're 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 slightly different. Transfer case. Uh, the, the one thing I think that a lot of people and you guys may have even experienced this. And my my, my concern and apprehension, because I actually started my career doing transfer cases and, and transmissions with uh, new process gear yeah. uh, in the '90s, and. Uh, so when they were they were introducing this to me, I said, "Well, you know, there was reasons that everybody went to those new process transmission or transfer cases from the from the cast iron uh, Dana version." And uh, they were like, "Yeah, but it's so capable." And 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 it's been reiterated too: is when the people want the, the rugged, durable capability, uh, they're going after this this, this original cast iron um, uh, peak case. Um, the the shiftability. I myself have never had an issue shifting it. Uh, I know that uh, that uh, some people are concerned that uh, because it's non-synchronized, it uh, presents an issue. Uh, but it just takes uh, a certain certain degree of finesse and and uh, know-how, and uh, it goes in and in and out like butter. I was going to say it's a pretty <laughs> low deg- well. low degree of of skill that it takes because I'm able <laughs> to do it. So it's yeah. it's, it's not hard yeah. to shift one of the like I will you tell said you, it not I, Yeah, I came home and the wife had it in four wheel drive. <laughs> I was like, I, I would say cold butter, right? Like, <laughs> a certain amount of fortitude there, but yeah, it it, uh, it does go. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what type of like so? So you guys haven't been in the U.S. selling these that long, correct? I, I think you said you came over to the U.S. in thirteen. Yeah, we we launched the the plant that we're building is in last November, uh, and I believe we they, we rolled live with this in March. Sometime it seems like yesterday everything kind of rolls together. March of this um, year, March of 2018. March of this year, yeah, March of 2018, yeah, yeah. What was the testing um, like in, in North America? Did did you have to do separate testing for the Roxor in North America than what you had already done in India with this platform? Oh yes, absolutely. We had we did uh, a number of things. We, one of the things we targeted was anti roba compliance, um, which is uh, recreational off road uh, vehicle. So uh, we we met a lot of uh, those uh, those standards um, with regard to to being uh, anti rova compliant um, uh, for certain safety aspects and just certain uh, off road uh, compliance. Uh, the, the the U.S. market required a uh, U.S. For, forestry approved uh, spark arrester uh, on the exhaust pipe. So we we had to apply uh, apply that and on the cold end exhaust. And um, which was, you know, kind of entertaining in and of itself, trying to understand what the Forestry Service was going to get from that out of the diesel. But um, <laughs> you know, that was part of the part right. of the compliance. What's going to get past the turbocharger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we we adapted one of the other North American specific uh, uh, additions to the engine, and really the only modification to the engine was is an intake heater for for low temperature startability. 
Um, so uh, India, they, they have cold temperatures, but not necessarily like our, our uh, northern uh, cold temperatures. And so we've, uh, we've addressed uh, to, to exceed some of the competitors with regard to the startability and low temperature. By adding an intake heater. Okay. How about the EGR? Is that uh, so? Is tier two in India, or is this just a North American issue? Uh, no, it's zero four. It's zero four. It uh, is zero four. Okay. In, in India, we we came in under uh, the federal test procedure at ten fifty one, which uh, regulates the uh, the off road ATV segment, and uh, we're we're. Um, We've been really thrilled with the uh, the support we've gotten in, in certifying that and um, and and getting compliant in that. And uh, yeah, we're not we're not resting necessarily. We got uh, our sights set on on um, uh, bigger improvements and and trying to again eke more out of what we've got and uh, and leverage what they we're trying to understand what the what the market requests are going to be too so you know keep the sure. keep the comments coming yeah <laughs> well, wh- speaking of one of the comments that i seem to be pretty standard in the uh mahindra Roxor enthusiast usa facebook group <laughs> they, they really tested me there i had to write it down um okay so in that group which is the largest Roxor enthusiast group right now that i could find on facebook anyways one of the most common threads that i see every day is about road legal how do i get my mahindra road legal can i just start at the beginning of that question and ask what are the plans for a rocks or to be road legal from the factory? Or was there a reason that you guys went towards the UTV market instead of a daily commuter market? Uh, we did not see, uh, we, we did not see, uh, an on road market as being something that this product really would fit into. Again, that, that, uh, that spins into, um, a lot of additional, uh, uh, um, uh, effort and and uh, compliance uh, requirements, and and we really didn't want to water down um, the, the 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 basics, the, the basics of it. You know, the more things you throw at it, you know, the next thing you know, if somebody wants a um, a fancy radio and and um, you know more stuff to break, and then that's not what this was intended to do. It's intended to be a uh, 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 not a daily commuter, not something that somebody is going to use day in and, and, and uh, day out in a uh, non-utilitarian way. So, um, it's really uh, specialized, I guess. So what I'm hearing, Carl, is kind of like the the safety changes that would have to be made, the uh, regulatory uh, compromises that would have to yeah, be made. Yeah, the proportions, the proportions would all change. Uh, you know, you... <laughs> Uh, d- despite the uh, despite everybody's um, uh, in- interest in, in trying to uh, be these uh, fully off-road capable um, on-road vehicles, those two things don't really match. Um, uh, you know, you, you guys have talked about trying to trying to get out and uh, and, and exercise uh, exercise at high speed, but uh, it's it's not uh, it's not that vehicle, right? It's not a uh, uh, it's not an on-road vehicle. Yeah, no, I can. Tell you, having driven one, it <laughs> really speed, it's, there's there's probably better platforms you could pick for a 65 mile an hour commute. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Fair enough. Okay. Well, guys, I know we now, can't. If you're going 65 oh. miles an hour, if you're going 65 miles in the Alaskan bush, this is what you're going to want. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, I do accept your invite to the Alaskan bush for a rocks or a run. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, Guys, we are on Diesel Performance Podcast. We got to talk about the performance here. So I want to kind of group uh, the engine, the turbo, the fuel system, you know, the powerhouse here. Um, Nick, I'd say you're probably our resident expert on uh, diesel power in in some sort of broad sense. Sure. Um, It's a a fun little motor. Uh, It's definitely got a little turbocharger on it. I think it's like a 33 millimeter inducer and a one uh, one cylinder high pressure pump and the injectors look a lot like an LLY. Uh, the truck tunes like a lot like an LLY. Um, the first thing that jumped out at me is it's non intercooled, so you know mm-hmm. you, you get a little bit of heat rejection you're dealing with on the performance side of the vehicle if you're going to take it to that you know to that side. Sure. Of course, if you're doing that, you're probably voiding warranty and doing a host of other things that maybe you know Carl's guys may, might not approve of, but. On the performance side, the, the thing's got potential, and it's a lot of fun with, with the extra power. Yeah. 
How how did power play into to your guys' specifications when you were originally kind of specking this out, Carl? Did you guys have a horsepower goal that like you set and said, okay, we're not going to go over this, or was it just this was the best motor for the off road rugged application? Like, how did you kind of pick those things? Uh, we, we we looked at the the entire portfolio, and and that was one thing that we we've been. Um, looking through rigorously, and I can tell you that, that Mandra is making uh, great strides in this, but um, uh, uh, give you a little uh, more background on the, the local organization. One of the first things, we, we, we came in here with, with two mandates. One is to um, to, to improve the, uh, the um, quality of the engineering uh, and, and effort uh, for, for global approach uh, for the for the India market, and, and we were assigned a, a front wheel drive, uh, body on frame, small MPV uh, vehicle, which came with a 1.5 liter uh, diesel, and it was rated at 105 horsepower. And it's a seven passenger van, and I was looking at it as we were sitting around the table going, "Seriously, that's what we're going to we're going to put out there with a for a seven passenger van?" <laughs> and, uh, and and they were like, "Yeah, you know, everything over there is around this." this uh, this 105 horsepower. Now they're making a big gain uh, on top of that, but uh, no. From from for, for this this motor itself, it, it ranges in that marketplace from uh, from uh, 50 horse or 49 horsepower up to about 85 horsepower uh, under uh, under different um, configurations. And um, and and for for us and and, and for this application, this this, this was going 195 newton meters of torque. Um, it moves it just fine. Um, uh, like, you know, we were describing, you know, your, your, your towing cap- capacity. I'm not sure what you're going to do with, uh, with more, more power. I mean, it's, uh, we're not necessarily going to break any records in the zero to 60 time frame, I guess, <laughs> but, uh, we're still going to get to where we need to go. Oh, you leave that. You don't know what to do with more power question to me. Come um, on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Okay, how about how about so was the tur- was the engine turbo fuel system all one package or did you have to kind of start to piece some of this together like the choice to go intercooled or non intercooled? How much of this was was decided by like the USA Roxor team, and how much of this was like a Mahindra crate motor proper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we we uh, looked at at all the options that we had, and again, we were going for for simplicity. Um, more so than so you know so we did we did avoid uh, intercooler intercooled options um, and and we did we did avoid uh, certain other um, higher tech they actually offer this engine and you know probably you know, the way it was rolled out to us is there were four or five different choices initially and and as we were going through it there's really like like sixty choices and they do use this and everything from certain commercial uh, commercial applications with all kinds of different configurations but again we were we were looking for let's let's try to keep this as simple as possible and not overtax ourselves we were we were really interested in and in, um and in getting um and bringing something um without too much uh, fanfare and, and an additional level we were operating a very small team too um again the, the concept came out in the garage with uh, you know about three people and at that time, I think we had 14 people uh, uh, working for Mahindra in North America. Uh, we, we quickly, as as we we really got this program approved, I think we were up to 75 people. Uh, now we're approaching 300 people within the Mahindra North American Technical Center. Oh my God! Uh, That's including crazy. including the third, including the 60 to 70 people we have in the hourly staff to actually building products. So, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> that is, that is a wild ramp up so period. Of- yeah. <laughs> so so a lot say, of the decisions had to be made was what can we do with the people that we have now? Right. What is what is simple? <laughs> what can we do now? So question for you, Carl, on the on the performance side, you know, a certain amount of these buyers are gonna wanna you know, wanna hot rod the thing. As far as yeah. as far as the parts off the as far as the most sought after uh, higher performance versions of this motor, um, can you give us some insight into like you know there's a, I think there's a four valve head out there that fits this long block. I think there's probably a bigger exhaust manifold or probably a little. You know what I mean? Can you can you give us like the hot rodders version of what this motor might look like? <laughs> well, yes and no. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> Frame it out however you need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get yeah, in trouble, but tell yeah. us everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I, I can tell you that there are, are, are likely a lot of different configurations. I think, I think the, probably the big challenge is trying to find something that really is going to be a, a direct bolt-on because despite the fact that it, it, you know, it appears and looks and, and that seems to be the same thing, it's not the same thing. Okay. Uh, I mean, for a long time, there's a lot of com- uh, comments about the, 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 trans- uh, the transfer case being a Dana 18 transfer case, and the guys from Dana came in there and like we don't even recognize that. Uh, so <laughs> where there is some some dimensions that are that are similar, and and I think it, it, it actually harkens back to you know the block uh, some of the block dimensions harken back to an international harvester design um, of, of some some years ago. Uh, it may be a challenge to to, to find the things to to, to, to bolt on. Now, that being said, uh, we've got a, a larger group of people here. We've got a great service organization, and, and we're definitely interested in hearing what people, um, um, you know, would like uh, uh, to pursue. Um, we also know that uh, that from our, our standards and our uh, expectations, uh, it, Going too much in the in the horsepower range is, is likely to to negatively impact your your overall durability. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I mean, most people are are willing to sacrifice um, some of that, but uh, you know, for us, we're like, okay, let's let's try not to push the envelope too far. That's good. That leaves us a little room to push. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <so. laughs> no, no, but it is. Uh, we've always had this kind of relationship with OEMs of uh, being people who are in the aftermarket that, you know, we've got to talk for to guys from GM and yeah. from other places before. And there's a little bit of a dance, right? Because we know that you, you as Mahindra have to do what's best for Mahindra. And we know that there's another group of people out there who maybe have a different set of priorities that would more like the things that we're into. Uh, so finding yeah. that kind of overlap, that, that Venn diagram of, of where that space is, is always kind of interesting. Uh, that does bring me into, like you had kind of alluded to here, the future of the line. Uh, are, are we going to expect to see a, a four seater rocks or a hard top version, a truck version? Like what's, what's the next big swing for the fences from uh, the Mahindra USA? We've got a lot of things. <laughs> we got a, again. This is this is one of those. Um, uh, what can we do with the people that we have uh, on staff now? We are definitely trying to improve the, the capability. We've had a lot of uh, uh, questions with regard to uh, the four seaters. In fact, we were doing some evaluations in uh, the sand dunes over on the w- uh, west part of the state on uh, shores of Lake Michigan, mm-hmm. and a park ranger came up and he was like, "Boy, this would really be great for us." Uh, we need to have a four seater though, and it, you know, it needs, but it also needs to include a, a, a roll cage over the, those uh, exist, uh, you know, those additional right. passengers. Right. Uh, so there's there's a lot of tales to uh, to each of the things that are going on, but we're we don't have anything um, we don't have anything that we're not looking at. We're we're trying to prioritize uh, um, uh, uh, the immediate needs, and and you know, as you guys alluded to, you know, the automatic transmission is definitely of interest. Uh, four, four seats is definitely of interest. Uh, uh, other other agricultural type uh, applications are definitely of, of interest. Um, like BTO you know, type most, deal most of what we've been trying to yeah most most of what we've been trying to address is is in the areas of, of, of uh, ensuring a, a reasonable degree of, of safety uh, and and, uh, and, and, and capability. Yeah. So um, as far as your performance things go, you, know, you guys are. I think you were um, alu- uh, touching on it, but definitely uh, airflow, um, the, the the flow through the head, uh, you know, all that is definitely going to to take you in the right direction, and uh, and uh, um, uh, getting there um, would would you definitely see some improvements. So no, we like to hear that absolutely. Turbos, huh, Nick? That's just a, just a little bit of love there lately. Bullseye number one. Right? <laughs> let's, let's try and get that turbocharging system ironed out. I love it. Cool. Guys. Yeah, we were doing some early simulations with that turbo, and I, I'll be honest with you, um, I was working with a, a, an expert out of uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, a, a PhD, and and uh, as I was describing this to him, and and. He kept calling you back, going, you got those dimensions right? This is the smallest turbo I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> he is a little guy. I, when we pulled off the, the rock star, I was like, 
Man, this is the smallest turbo I've ever seen on an engine this size. Yeah, because the two eight, yeah. I would have expected to kind of get a similar size turbo yeah. as the yeah, two eight like on the Duramax. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean that's a, like a thirty eight mil right uh, inducer, and that's a I want to say a billet inducer as well. Yeah, but I mean this this turbo is very responsive. I think it makes nine psi, um, and it's in its configuration on the Rocksor, mm-hmm. which is you know plenty to make that power, and you know it's just. It's right there when you need it. It's like perfectly spec for stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is, right? It's like, because yeah, really what well. do you want out of this? Like we talked about is there's only one model with a five-speed trans. So it is nice to get it, to be able to get moving. It is nice that you don't need to lay on it. Like you said, it's super responsive. It's not insanely loud. It's not like you're, no. the, you're not going to hear the turbo whistle, y- no. you know, no. um, which, which is nice too, right? Like if I'm out hunting and, you know, as sure. quiet as I can be yeah. to get to my spot. So I do like the spark arrestor. I like the exhaust. Like that's one of the things that I really like about this. Well, I went on about the Tesla right earlier, but uh, <laughs> quiet, <laughs> quiet stuff, quiet fast. Is my, is, I really appreciate that. And uh, oh, quiet. Yeah. Well, once you turn this. Yeah, we, we stumbled into we stumbled into that a little bit because you know there was a few versions that we were throwing together and uh, they were you know shaking the the, the frames uh, that we had uh, for the, for uh, windscreens that we had for testing and things like that and, and uh, steering wheels shaking apart and <laughs> um, yeah so yeah no we're happy we finally got the right mix it is it's nice it's a it's a comfortable ride for what it is it's just a matter of getting that windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the extra power, the windshield is an excellent modification. <laughs> it's the little things, the little creature things. comforts. Yeah. God, you're so spoiled now. You ride a motorcycle and you think, okay, I can ride with safety. I, you know, you ride with sunglasses on a motorcycle, like 65 miles an hour. Yeah, it's not pleasant, but it's not like, you know, it's, it's debilitating. Doable. Right. Yeah. Um, but you get in the rock soar and you get the, like, with the wind buffeting off the front of the hood. You know, it's just oh yeah, all those yeah. Square surfaces and your ears are what feel it the worst. <laughs> it's it's uh it's serious. Well, they're only supposed to do forty, Nick. Drive know, this limit. I, I know, right? Follow the rules; yeah. you won't have these problems. Um, I, I do love. The I can ca- tell you after two days of two days of testing in the sand, it was pretty bad too. Everybody was <laughs> find, still finding sands and bits of their pla- bodies yeah. that they didn't know existed. Right? <laughs> two days later, I love it. I love That's it. It's awesome. So, question on the so the the parts. The Mahindra uh, USA is is located like where's the hub? Where is it? Michigan? Yeah, yeah we're uh, our uh, our main office, our headquarters is uh, in Auburn Hills, okay. uh, Michigan, just north of um, just north of Detroit. Uh, we started out in in Troy, Michigan, just a little uh, way south, and um, yeah, we've been uh, we, we've got. Uh, uh, there's another offshoot, which is an all-electric scooter company called Gen Z, and they're out of Ann Arbor. Okay. And then um, uh, Tech Mahindra, which is again a separate uh, uh, organization, they kind of they kind of operate globally, and, and they've got offices all over uh, the country. And then obviously there's the uh, uh, Mahindra USA Tractor Group out of Texas. Okay. Awesome. Uh, but our automotive group is uh, is in Detroit. Um, our CEO, uh, who was working in, in India after uh, being at Tesla for a while, he went over to, to work at, um, at Mahindra in India. And uh, when they were talking about the, the plans that they, they had, uh, and he evaluated the talent uh, and the, the availability of, of resources, of course, um, uh, this was you know, shortly after the, 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 the Great Recession, as people like to refer to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, I think we're, we'll stand a good chance of, of uh, getting some good talent in the Detroit area. And um, so that's what we've been doing. Plenty of that. Plenty of that. That's good. That's awesome. Well, Carl, thank you so much for taking out some time uh, from your busy schedule to talk to our listeners today. I know this is kind of a, a newer topic for maybe yeah. Diesel Performance Podcast to get into something like this, but it's just such a cool fucking truck it man it's so much bill, fun man. it fits the bill <laughs> and it's fresh and it, you know, it's new so absolutely yeah uh, go ahead it, it, it does it it is difficult to take a smile off your face getting in and getting out yeah <laughs> fact <laughs> uh carl any anything that you wish you could have got to talk about today uh no i mean uh yeah i was i was kind of expecting you guys to, to grill me a little bit more on uh on uh uh, some of the details of it. We've, we've uh, really been surprised at the uh, 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 acceptance uh, in the market and the support that we've been getting from, from the market and the dealer base. Uh, and uh, it, it is, 
uh, it's a fun product. Uh, it it uh, serves a lot of purposes, and it will definitely be a, uh, definitely be a good uh, good fit for for any family with uh, ten acres and a dog and a two two cows and a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would I would wholeheartedly agree, and I yeah. hope our listeners give you some feedback after this, Paul, that they that they want to have Carl come back on and uh, got some got some more uh, specific questions for him and and get after him a little more on the tech side. Because I think I, it's good to get a primer like this, yeah, right? Yeah, kind of know the product. And you don't want to be a total guy and just you know like just be that asshole. <laughs> and be like, I, I have a note that says <laughs> second interview questions. Um, so Carl, we have a little uh, trick you know, here. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean I, the timing is it, difficult. It, Difficult timing we're going through because we're, we're still fairly new. We're trying to sort through all the inputs that we're getting, prioritizing uh, what the needs in the market are. You know, feel free to contact me and on, on, uh, and uh, any uh, major improvement points you guys want want to see and, and, and what you're looking for. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we, we will we definitely address it. The, the service group that we have out there is a, a big enthusiast. Uh, they're 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 hardcore. Uh, uh, roll up their sleeves, you know, get into it, uh, understand what the customer's needs are, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're the kind of person that will, if they saw you on the side of the trail, would just get out and start, you know, jacking up the, the truck and fixing it, you know, <laughs> for you after, if they saw something like that going on. So, without any questions. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. So. Well, again, thank you so much. And listeners, this has been Paul Wilson, Chris Emke, and Nick Prignitz. Thanks for listening.